in short, this is taking place sometime uh, in the days of ancient Babylon. It's a different universe than the one we inhabit. And these, these people who live in the town of Babylon, really a city, have been building a tower for centuries to make contact with heaven. So for centuries, they've been laying brick upon brick upon brick. And they're about to break through the vault and actually reach heaven. And Hillelum is a miner from a town nearby. And he goes with a group of other miners to actually dig up, break through the vault and find out what Yahweh or the God in, in, the, in the story has in store for them. So mm-hmm. what we get throughout the story is Hillelum and his miners, as well as some other folks that they meet along the way, climbing up over, over months and then eventually spending years in this tower Um, attempting to break through the vault into heaven. And we find whole civilizations within this tower, people who have never stepped outside of the tower, their whole lives revolve, born, they're born in the tower, they die in the tower, they have kids, they marry, they go through life in the tower. And it's a crazy, crazy journey from the top where, you know, physics are different than our universe. They eventually rise above the sun, they see the sun set, and they're looking down at the sun, plants grow down towards the sun. And they eventually reach um, the top and they're about to break through. And I'll, I'll pause there in terms of the summary. Things yeah, I missed, things you want to add? No, so I, no, you did an excellent job. I, Good, A plus. Surprised me. Okay. Um, so it would, I want to just like read two really kind of brief things. So yeah. Page six, he says, it had always seemed inspiring to Hillelum, a tale of a thousand men toiling ceaselessly, but with joy, for they work to know Yahweh better. He had been excited when the Babylonians came to Elam looking for miners. Yet now that he stood at the base of the tower, his senses rebelled, insisting that nothing should stand so high. So this tower is like literally endless. It's just, yeah. it starts at the ground and it's not like a skyscraper. It is like a, kind of like the stairway to heaven. It's the tower to heaven. It just continues. It's endless. And, and there's that other image where they're halfway up the tower, right? And when he's looking down and he's looking up, it's the exact same because the distance mm-hmm. is just, you can't see past a certain point. So I, I think mm-hmm. to a point, we can't even imagine something like that. And I think Ted throughout the story deals with the fact that Hillelum at, at certain point has to wonder if this is so unnatural. Like, and it's so unnatural that as readers, we can try to visualize it, but the visualization won't do it justice because there's nothing on our planet that exists that's even close to this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's sort of like he's, at the beginning, you wonder like, all right, why is Hill I'm doing this? So, so you get kind of like a, um, a, one thing that I noticed in returning to it. So Hill is, so most of the people are kind of, if you imagine just like a devout Christian Jew, Muslim, where they just, they drink the Kool-Aid, you know, they they drink the Kool-Aid straight up. That's most of the people. And then you have your unique individual thinker and that's, and that happens in every religion and that's who Hillel represents. And they show that at the beginning because they ask him, someone says like, don't drop your trowel because if you drop your trowel, then you'll never have a trowel at the top. And Hillel's like, people will just bring extra travels. Like that doesn't make sense. And so we get this kind of inkling that Hillelum is going to shake things up. And that's exactly what he does. He kind of, as the story goes on, he keeps questioning things. He questions, yeah. I, there's a point where it's like, there, he's way up there. And he just says how, uh, how it feels like this is wrong. Like they're extending from earth into above the sun into outer space and they are extending past the limits of what like a human should because they're just humans so what a human should actually do so so when you were when you were reading did that like how did that speak to you because i feel like everyone has a kind of different sort of grasp of language and symbolic you know like what did, did that symbolize anything to you yeah hill alum has a character you're right he's willing to say things and make reference to the unnaturalness and the hubris that is required here to build a tower like this. But it's a really interesting juxtaposition, I think, with the rest of the society here, that they're willing to build this tower. They're willing to go and meet Yahweh in heaven. And in that sense, do something that Hillelum references as unnatural. 
yet outside of building this tower, they're obsessed with not, you know, living within the codes of their society, avoiding transgression. There's a part in the, in the story where a star hits the tower and it's never spoken about because the fact that they brought the star to a museum is a transgression. They feel so guilty. It feels so wrong. And in this society, there are these codes that they all live by. And yet there's been this very, very odd uh, mistake that they've almost made where, and maybe it's not a mistake. We'll talk more about the ending, but it's at least they, they've seemed to have overlooked the fact that building a tower to heaven might be slightly unnatural. Uh, despite the fact that in so much of the rest of their lives, they're so obsessed with everything living within this code of ethics and avoiding these transgressions. So throughout the book, I think there's that tension between the humility of these people, not wanting to play God, but the also the ingenuity of man, the we will reach such great heights, we will develop and human progress will be so, so incredible. And I think that tension is at the core of kind of what you were talking about with Hillelum's character and where he comes in. Mm -hmm. So that's that little star story. I'm glad yeah. you brought that up. The little star story is on page 16. You want, it's like, do you want to just read that last, like middle paragraph before the break? Let's see. Page 16. Oh, no, men were frightened to touch it. Everyone descended from the tower, waiting in retribution from Yahweh for disturbing the workings of creation. They waited for months, but no sign came. Eventually, they returned and pried out the star. It sits in a temple in the city below. There was silence. Then one of the miners said, I've never heard of this in the stories of the tower. It was a transgression, something not spoken of. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, you, you mentioned the, the transgression. It just like, okay, for, for me, what started like screaming out was history is written by the victors. You know, it's just like we, we know American history because America won the wars and like we don't know the yeah. underside of these things. So this is this is a really hard question, but I'm curious in your like, can you think of examples, not like stars hitting towel, towers, but like what do you think is a transgression in our cultural history? Like, are there any examples that come to mind that are maybe overlooked and brushed away or like a transgression that? We, because I think a lot of what Ted's doing in these stories is creating like analogies and, and symbols. And like, so this tower for the humans in the story is to me, it is how I interpret it, is an, an, an analogy to man building technology, man basically trying to, he claims that he is connecting with God you know, becoming, doing God's work, but really he's trying to be a God. We make these technologies to make ourselves more like gods. And that's sure, why sure. that's a power. great way of framing it. Yeah. It's yeah. instead of they're throughout the book, they're so obsessed with getting closer to God, but in reality, what they're really doing, right. Is playing the part of God. And it's a, that's an interesting framework. So you were mm -hmm. asking if there are places in society or in history where I think just in the pursuit of progress, we've made similar transgressions and mm -hmm, how that could mm -hmm. compare. Yeah, I think depending on the lens, uh, people are always going to see True. history that way, just the way it unfolds and all the victims of history. It's an incredibly bloody, terrible affair, no matter what country's history you're looking at. There isn't a single nation, civilization or ever that can, you know, that at the end of the day can look themselves in the mirror and say, we've done everything very cleanly. I, I think, as you've just been talking about this, I see it many ways today with tech. And my role outside of doing podcasts with you is investing in tech. And there is this pronounced internal debate between, you know, building big tech companies, and then trying to juggle afterwards with the implications that they may have for society. We see this with Facebook, most notably, and in the news, of course, as well as other places where you know, of course, TikTok and the China influence, Instagram with young teens and preteens, the environmental impacts of so many of these technologies and the pushback from other companies trying to fix those, the human labor costs of something like the iPhone, which we all use. Uh, when you dig deep into the tech companies that are so sexy and glamorous on the surface, and yet at the same time,